Greetings to you members and friends of Congregational Church of the Valley. This is the way that we're going to be coming to you for this period of time during the pandemic. We have been told to keep our distance from each other and so we will. That's kind of hard for the church because the church likes to get up close, help people, welcome people, and in this congregation, a handshake, a hug. That's what we do here. But we cannot do that right now. So we're going to utilize the second best thing, which is media, to come to you on a weekly basis. I would suggest this to you. You have received this by one of the media forms in which it came to you. I would suggest that you take a copy of this service and, and forward it to a couple of friends as a method of giving them encouragement. I believe that the message today will be one of great encouragement in this time that we are really needing that for sure. So the title of the sermon is, For Such a Time as This. We're going to be looking at Romans, the eighth chapter. Now, before we receive that, I would like you to go with me and let us gather around the piano and receive the marvelous music of Larry Lober.
Our scripture readings this morning are taken from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, starting with verse 31. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or death? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church. Last week I read about a comedian who has starred in many places across the United States And he asked a question in the midst of one of his routines. He said, what brings people together? He says, what does it take? Then he answered his own question. He said, it's something terrible. That's what brings people together. Nothing good, but something terrible. I find that he is profoundly right in the majority of the cases. We are coming together because something terrible has happened. You know about war and earthquakes. You know about weather disasters, disease, hunger. Uh, All of these bring people together. A certain amount of empathy goes out that maybe we had not seen before or shared with other people. That is true. Now the Coronavirus pandemic is bringing us together, even though we must stand apart. Isn't that an incredible paradox? By standing apart, we suddenly realize how much we need to be together. True of the church, true of every facet of society. We are kind of like Esther in the Hebrew Bible. She was asked, to act decisively in the time which she lived. There was someone who challenged her and said, who knows that you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this? We could talk about her times, but I'm more interested in the question, what time is it for you and I right now? What time is it for our society? I'm going to suggest two things. This is a time of great gravity. Extreme gravity. These are grave times. And you may have read already, and I'll read it in part, those marvelous words from Brother Richard, an Irish priest, who says in part, yes, there's fear. Yes, there's isolation. Isolation. Our daughter-in-law, a week ago, had serious surgery at a hospital in San Francisco. Our son, Rich, was instructed that he could not go in. He drove up to the curb and had his wife step out into the hospital with the conviction that he'd be picking her up in three days, which he did. And she's doing fine, and thank you. She is doing fine. But he could not go in. So yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness, says this uh, priest. Yes, there's even death. They say that in the streets of Assisi in Italy, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family all around them. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a whole new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality. We are waking up to the fact of how big we are 
as a world, and yet how connected we are to how little control we really have in our lives. I've known that intellectually, but now I truly know it. We are waking up to what really matters. We're waking up to love. There can always be rebirth of love, says this priest. Wake to the choices you make as to how you live now, today. And then he suggests to us, good suggestion, that we learn how to breathe. Breathe deeply, in and out. Make sure we breathe. We are always encompassed by love, he says. Open the windows of your soul. And though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing, sing. Translated, reach out in any kind of way you can to give encouragement to another human being at this time. My friend Bill McNabb is a minister in Northern California and at the Piedmont Community Church, church much like ours. And he recently went in front of the First World War Memorial to deliver a message to his congregation. They put it on video, just like we're doing here. And this is what he said to them. He said, there are three things that I want to talk about around the year 1918. Number one, it was the end of World War I. Number two, there have been some forgotten facts and people are talking a lot about it now, that they had the Spanish flu that infected. Are you listening? It infected 500 million people worldwide. 50 million people worldwide died, 10% of the total. He reminded them of that moment in 1918. And then he said, you may have forgotten, he was saying this to the people in his church, that that is the very year that we started our congregation here in Piedmont. That's when it was built. And then he told this story. There is a small country church in England that, was a, that has a plaque over the door which reads, in the year 1653, when all things sacred were throughout the kingdom either demolished or profaned, Sir Robert Shirley founded this church whose singular praise it is to have done the best of things in the worst of times. That is our job today. That's the church at its best. The, that's our country at its best to do the best of things in the worst of time. Catastrophes, I'm here to tell you, don't create goodness. Catastrophes, like what we're going through, reveal a goodness that we didn't know was there, was sitting dormant, but we're bringing it out now. And all of that is good, to do the best of things in some of the toughest and worst of times. Yes, we are at a time in life that is very great. And secondly, we're at a time of great grace. Right in the midst of very difficult times, if you're a biblical student, you'll know this to be true, right in the midst of difficult times is the powerful expression of the grace of God. It's like a shaft of light coming in to a darkened room and brightening all around. I don't know if you know the name uh, Victor Frankl. Uh, he passed away in the 1990s. Uh, he was the one who invented what they call logotherapy. He was the one who was in the death camp in Auschwitz, and he tells of this experience in the death camp. He said, we who lived in the concentration camps can remember the men, he was one of them, he won't say it, but he is one of them. We can remember the men who walked through the huts, comforting others, giving away their best piece of bread and their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a person. But one thing, the last of the human freedoms 
to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. End of quote. And so we talked about his therapy being that of the will to meaning, that if you can find meaning, even in the darkest corners, all will be well, and you'll be able to survive it. Viktor Frankl was invited to preach at the church I served in Ohio in the 1950s. This is right after the Second World War. He was becoming enormously popular and was talking about uh, the, the gift of meaning in life, that that is what will get you through all kinds of circumstances. Uh, the minister at that time, Dr. Roy Burkhart, invited him to come and to preach at the church to speak. And so he was getting ready to come and Viktor Frankl uh, called the minister and said, you know, it, it just dawned on me that yours is a Christian church. And he says, I got to tell you, I'm Jewish. And Dr. Burkhart said, uh, yes, we know that. And incidentally, the leader of our religion, he was a Jew. So you just get on that train, you come and be with us, which he did and was a great blessing indeed. What a privilege, what a privilege to have him lead us from darkness to light, even to this day in, the, in all of the, the books that he has written. My daughter Bria contacted me two weeks ago, just as we were at the apex. Remember where we are right now. When I saw 61 deaths clear across America, I said, okay, it looks like we're keeping things down. And, and suddenly in no time at all, there are a thousand and suddenly I'm paying more attention and I recognize the gravity, the gravity of it. She said to me this, she said, dad, I have had a distant feeling that something big is going to happen that is going to reorient our values in this country, to get us to see what is most important, to bring the human family together as one. And she and I agreed that that moment has arrived. So the comedian was, he was not joking. Something like this moment of forced pause and forced stillness is needed to awaken us to what is important and what is not. Forced pause, forced stillness. How many things are available to us right now that we said we're going to get to at one time out in the future, that finally we have the time indeed to do that. And so this time of pause and stillness can be utilized as a great gift, and you know that I'm not counting the coronavirus as a gift, but that's the thing that we can squeeze out of it if we'll pay attention. So what shall we do? I'm glad you would ask that question. Look for the helpers and then be one yourself. Remember Mr. Rogers? He said that when nat natural disasters and disasters of all times came, his mother taught him you know, whenever you see that, Fred, whenever that happens, look for the helpers, look for the helpers. And right now we can thank God for the, the helpers who are stretched so thin right now. We need to thank God for these good people every moment that we are existing right now. But then also, we can turn around and be a helper ourselves. But then we say, well, you know, we can't get together with, with the human family, so, so what are we to do? And there are ways that we can be of help. Another thing that we can do is to see every human face differently. There's a marvelous story of a spiritual director who was teaching some monks, and he asked them a, what seems like a simple question, uh, when do we know that night has ended and day has begun? How do we know that? And of course they started saying, well, you know, when you see the sun coming on up in the trees and through that, you know, and they started giving physical uh, answers to that. And uh, the spiritual director said, no, forget all of that. None of those are right. The teacher said, the night ends and the day begins when we see every human face as our brother and sister. Otherwise, friends, it is always night, always dark 
always night. So the most important is the question, maybe more important, not only shall, what shall we do, even with the limitations, then what shall we be at this time? What shall we be? I've invited you to consider being a little shaft of light in a very dark world right now. I don't know if you're familiar with Blake the poet who went blind at the end of his life and was still writing. And he said this most important thing that maybe we can hear now. He said, they also serve who only stand and wait. Stand and wait. How many times have we been instructed? Stand back, wait. You gotta wait. Stillness, pause. They also serve who only stand and wait. I love the story about a little girl who was in the Christmas pageant. You know, you gotta involve all the kids in a Sunday school and make sure everybody's got a part. And so this little girl uh, came home and here she had uh, this thing over her head, this big thing that had a whole bunch of points to it. And her mother said, well, what are you? What are you in the, in, in the Christmas pageant? She said, well, I'm a star. I play the star. She said, oh, really? Well, but what do you do? What do you do in the pageant? She said, I just stand there and shine. I just stand there and shine. God is needing us in moments of stillness, question mark, not knowing how to reach out, not knowing what to do, for us at least to shine. They also serve who only stand and wait. Who knows but that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I remind you that you're needed. Let your light shine by all of the means that are available to you. Let us love and care at a distance for a moment until that day we see everyone differently and when again we can see each other up close. May God bless us together in all of these days until that day. Amen. As we pray together to today, let us first hear the words from Philippians. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, when Jesus walked among us on earth, representing you like no other, he showed your power and caring as he healed people of all ages and stations of life from physical, mental, and spiritual ailments. Be present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. Take away the fear, anxiety, and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under quarantine. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure to the disease. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. As we have been taught in scripture, we cast all our cares on you because we know you care for us. Bless all doctors and nurses who we are exhausting with our many needs. Help us to help them with our kindness and care for their lives as well as our own. Bless our leaders everywhere who have been thrown into uncharted territory until now. Bless our families who are juggling so much among home and spouse and children and work. Bless our restaurant workers and businesses of all kinds who have, have no idea what to do and fear for their future. Bless our grocery workers working fr frantically to take care of us. Bless all of us that we might cooperate in this moment with what we know is the right thing to do in order to defeat this disease. Let us pause for a moment and lift all additional cares that are on our hearts today up to the Lord.
We are to pray all these things in the name of our friend, the healing source who taught the disciples. And so we are bold to pray the same. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
People of God, may God bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you, and give you peace in the midst of challenging times, knowing that God's grace goes with you. Find a way to reach out in the ways that you can now. Remember that every human being that you speak with, every person that you see in the store and the few places you might go now, every human being is carrying something heavy and they need your kindness. Your kindness, even at a distance, in moments like this. May God bless us that indeed we might stand off to the side for a while until called together again, we celebrate all of the gifts of God in the family of faith. May the peace of God go with you in this moment. Amen.